Hey everybody, Professor Sarah Grillo here. So today's video is about comps. So by the way, I'm an ex Lehman Brothers analyst and putting together some modeling tutorials here for all of you that might be, you know, looking to get a job on the buy side and might not have done any modeling before or worked in a financial job on the investment side. So, um, you know, I have a, mo a model here I could send you and I also have a bunch of ratios in a spreadsheet that I think would be really useful. So email me and I could send it to you. But so here, you know, the first thing you want to do when you're putting together ratios is you obviously need the price because you're going to be comparing like price to cash flow ratio, price to book ratio, price to sales ratio. So the price, then you should always like put the date of whatever that price is just for reference because you don't want somebody asking you like, oh, well, what day are you doing this as of? And then you'd like, don't even know. But by the way, in my model that I'm going to send you, like my date is, it's not, I don't even know when the date is because it was so long ago. And this is not relevant. Do not use this as a basis for a recommendation. Don't trade on this. Don't sell these models either, by the way. Okay. So. Then you can find the, you know, you need to write down like net income, depreciation, amortization, EBIT, shares, and then you can come to free cash flow per share by adding the net income, depreciation, and amortization together, okay? And once you come to that, you can, once you have the shares, you can come to free cash flow per share. Now that's really interesting. Many companies are compared just on the basis of free cash flow to share. Free cash flow is very relevant. It is the view of Wall Street that companies with higher free cash flow per share are better companies to invest in. D depends really what company you're talking about, but that just seems to be the predominant view. Price to free cash flow ratio, obviously you want this lower anytime it's a price to anything, always the lower price. You want a small denominator, and a big denominator you want those ratios to be low free cash flow per share you want those to be high big denominator small de small big numerator small denominator price to free cash flow you want big new num small numerator big denominator uh, the other thing that's useful to do some balance sheet ratios so that one was like a combined income statement and, and cash flow analysis but you want to do just some straight balance sheet ratio. So for the balance sheet ratio, I always liked the net debt ratio, um, you know, long term debt. And that includes the pension, any of the like the pension benefit obligation. I always included it in my calculations. And then and then, um, you know, cash is subtracted out from net debt. Like net debt is how much you would be owed if you had to cash the company in and use the cash to pay off all the debt at that exact moment. That's really what I interpreted long-term debt to be. Um, because obviously you take the cash and pay off the short-term debt sooner. So long-term debt, um, you know, you get that, it's net debt in other words. Um, and then you get that number, the net debt number, and then you put that versus free cash flow. So free cash flow to net debt is another really relevant ratio. You want a higher numerator, long, lower denominator for that one as well, because obviously the more free cash flow you have in an emergency, right? Like if the company's sales were to stop tomorrow, what would the company really, you know, have in terms of just their cash flow? Um, you know, like currently at the moment, right? Like what is the cash flow looking like on an ongoing basis versus the amount of debt obligations that the company has if they've got not so high cash flow and a lot of debt, that ratio is going to be very low, not what Wall Street likes to see. The company might be in trouble from a solvency standpoint. Um, you know, also another combined, um, actually, no, this is an income statement ratio, is EBIT to interest expense. Okay, um, you know, calculate that there. And if you were to take, let me see, the just the interest expense, you know, from the from the income statement, and then take the EBIT that you've computed. Uh, let me see in my spreadsheet. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Take the earnings before interest and taxes. That is just straight from the income statement. And put together EBIT to interest expense. You know, obviously, you want that higher. The higher, the better because uh, you know interest is the ongoing obligation of the company. Current assets, another, the current ratio is another great ratio that I liked. 
Um, you know, ec debt equity ratio is another one. I always liked net debt to equity or long-term debt to equity. Um, but, you know, definitely look at the debt to equity ratio. Sales, operating margin, that's really important because most of the time if a company has really solid sales, then they're, they're in pretty good shape financially, but that's never a guarantee of anything. So looking at um, what is really happening in terms of the margins. Are the margins going to be strong? Are they going to be sustainable? You know, if they're selling the heck out of something and they can't get a good operating margin out of that, then what is that really telling you about the company? Because, you know, sales are going to get to a certain point, but then, you know, the solution can be to many financial problems can be we'll just sell more. But if they're already selling at their fullest potential, and they're not able to convert that to really solid results for the company, what is that gonna really mean for the future? You know, um, Book value per share, that's the ratio that many analysts really like. Um, you know, I would look at that one too. We've got that here in the spreadsheet. EV to EBITDA, very popular ratio. That's one that I use as well here in my models. Um, you know, and then putting together a target price very often, um, you know, using the, the, uh, let's see here, what is this that I have? Okay, the price. Okay, so putting together the, um, from my model, I get an estimate of the earnings per share, and then you can look at the forward PE ratio and then come up with a target price from that. So let me see here, operating cash flow and cap, CapEx coming up with free cash flow is the last in my model. So everybody, thank you so much for watching and um, just would encourage you, I'm going to send you this model if you'd like me to. These are some of the basic ratios that I like in my analysis. Go ahead and just put together, you know, an email and if you have any questions on this, you know, happy to send you along the model. And let's have a discussion. Thanks so much, everybody.